It's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm just going to get that out of the way. Amen. When I read this passage this week, I was struck by just how matter of fact this reads, just, just how simple it is, how, how very documentarian it is. You know, in the days of Caesar Augustus, in the time when Quirinius was governor, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. There's a, there's a joke that I've heard about how you would describe the four Gospels, that uh, Matthew is the book, Mark is the movie, Luke is the documentary, and John is the fever dream that inspired them all. But, but, read, but reading Luke, Luke treats this as an historian, and I can appreciate that. But, it, it, but it's, it's, it's such a, a almost dry rendering of what actually happened. Right? It's, it's very, very Joe Friday, just the facts, ma'am. And the, you know, using that to describe what a universe-changing thing happened in that stable. And I think that's the point. I think that's the point. I think that's the takeaway from this, that momentous, life-changing things, miracles, divine instances, those can happen in the most ordinary and simple and mundane circumstances. I love nativity scenes. I love nativity scenes. This is this one is so colorful and, and festive, and, and you automatically know what's going on, right? And I, I like to collect them. I've, I've actually collected quite a few over the years. Nothing that nothing with all the figurines, but it's usually just a, a little thing. That's really all you need, is you need that, that image of Mary and Joseph and the little baby in the manger and maybe a star. And that's all you need, and you instantly know what that scene is, what's going on. And, and, you, can, and you can contemplate that and, 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 and rejoice about, about, about that scene. You know, we, we had a lot of Christmas decorations when I grew up as a kid, and I, I always enjoyed when the time came around to decorate the house. But the only real, what you would say, religious or Christian decoration that we really had growing up, <coughs> like we had, we had lots of snow, we had lots of Santa and reindeer and, and you know, winter scenes and, and, and all that. But in, in, in our little fake fireplace in the living room, we would just have this, this paper mache nativity set. And just these, these, these three paper mache figures about yay high of Mary and Joseph and little, little Jesus in the manger. You know, just, you know handmade set. I, I, I couldn't tell you how old it was. I don't remember a time when, when we didn't have them. But it, but it was there in the little fireplace, which was the set for the for the stable, and that and that was it. But that was enough. That was enough for that scene to 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 think about. You know, as as a kid, I, I was more about you know I wonder what Santa's going to bring me for Christmas. But just to have that that little little thing there. As, as, as a reminder, what it was really supposed to all be about, what it really is all about. And I've talked about St. Francis a bit over the past few months, and I don't know if I've related this story to you. It's one of my favorite things. We, uh, history credits St. Francis with inventing the nativity scene. But when I started to research it, it, it what I found was so wonderful. It's not like he took a little model house and put some clay figures in there or whatever, carved out of wood or whatever, and said, here, here's a thing we can, you know, 
as, as an object of uh, contemplation, you know, a little, little bit of Im imagery to consider. He didn't do it like that. He did not do it like that. He took, he went to his hometown of uh, Assisi in Italy and decorated this whole big stable area, right? Just straw strewn all over the place. And he brought in a, a, a donkey and he brought in a bowl and he got him to sit down and a little wooden manger full, full of straw. That was it. That was it. And so he and his Franciscan brothers, all, all, all his friars, led the procession for the people through the town into that stable area where they'd all congregate around. And Francis started preaching, and the brothers started chanting and, and singing the hymns. Right? There was no there, were, there was nobody dressed up as Mary or Joseph. There was no doll in the manger. No, nobody playing the three magi coming in. No shepherds. No nothing. Right? He just set the stage. He just set the scene. And then he talked about it. He preached. They sang and they chanted. And according to Francis' biographer, there was at least one person there in that congregation who had a vision and actually saw the Christ child in the manger. God was present in that place. And people felt his power. You know, he doesn't need to be a big production to tell the story. You don't need a whole lot of effects. It doesn't need to be you know, the, the Radio City Christmas pageant. You know, it's, it's nice. It's very good. But you don't need it. You don't, you don't need a whole lot of special effects. You don't need a whole lot of color. It can be very simple. If you, if you set the stage well, if you tell the story well, you can convey that power. If you convey that what the glory of what happened, you can get people to see Emmanuel, God with us. Christ is here too. He is here among us as well. And no matter where we go and no matter what we do, he's there. He's there waiting for us. He's always there. So I want to ask you, in, in these last few days leading up to, leading up to this Christmas, and, and, and for the time past, and this is a little tidbit, I, I don't know if, if everybody knows this, the 12 days of Christmas actually starts on Christmas, despite what the advertisers would, would have you believe. The 12 days of Christmas starts on Christmas Day. Christmas does not end until January 6th. Don't think I'm not going to milk that for all it's worth. So what I want to ask is, how can you set the stage for somebody else? How can you tell that story so that someone else can see the child in that manger? That someone else can feel the glory and the joy of Emmanuel, of, of God with us. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. You can keep it simple. Let's pray.